So you had you had HELOC, you had HELOC and you had your MBA. MBA. Money. So were you using your house as a, like a manufacturing hub for all of this? I was actually. Yeah. yeah, there was something in California passed just the year before, year or two before, called the Cottage Food License, which enabled any person to make a food product at home up to a certain revenue threshold. So before that, a lot of the farmers market vendors you would see would have to go to like a certified kitchen in order to make their food. And so this enabled people to just make it at home as long as their place was inspected and approved by the county. Gotcha. So you had to have people come into your house and just like look over yeah, everything and to do the certify, whole, like, it. certify it. And then I started a little factory there. I would, you know, it was like a small it was a small unit. Like it was basically a one bedroom upstairs and then downstairs I had a garage. So I converted the garage into a warehouse, made the product upstairs and then took my mom out of retirement. She flew up and we were just making the tea. And was it just you two? Us manufacturing because we didn't trust anyone else with the recipe. Mm. And my mom is very protective of this recipe too. The so river in her. Yeah. yeah. So she was just That's like, thing. she's like, no one else is seeing this. She had, we had like a binder of all the recipes and I was like, oh, well, I'm, gonna, I'm thinking of hiring XYZ person. And she's like, no, like you have to protect this. So she flew up and she would make all the drops. What year me. was this? This was 2015. Okay. And so at that time, are you just going e-commerce? No. Okay. No, no, no. So I hadn't even gotten to the point where I quit my job. So I did all this, like so you got the heel on, behind the scenes, I'm like doing MBA all this, money. but yeah. I'm not like serious, you know, part of it is also a confidence thing to say, like, I'm starting a business. Okay. It was really hard for me to get there. Yeah. And so it was more like, I'm starting Why? this project. I'm starting this. Why was that hard? Like there was so much involved in having a business, like also the failure around if it doesn't work. And I mean, this whole thing it's is all just, on you. Yeah. It's all on you. And it was a lot of pressure yeah. for me. And also just feel like at that point, you know, I, I was so like low in confidence. I feel I was, I'm confident in some ways, but also like, oh, I don't have the right connections. Like, who do I think I am to like manufacture a food product? I don't know anything about, you know, the like, imposter syndrome. Sets yeah, in. absolutely. Yeah. So like there was a lot of things around that where I just didn't want to admit that it was like a business, but I think the tipping point for why I decided to leave is that I ended up st like having a lot of vacation stacked up. And then every five years at eBay, you get a one month paid sabbatical. And I was just hitting like my four and a half year mark. Mm -hmm. And so I basically went to my manager and said, you know, I was just very honest about it, but I was like, I kind of want to leave to start this, to see if I like working on this project of mine. And he took a look at it. And I mean, I understand because it's like tea pressed into like cute shapes, basically. And he's yeah. like, it's like kind of like. Wait, did you ask for this advice? No, no, no. <laughs> was I, I was just, just like, more telling him like, hey, okay. I'm, I'm leaving because I want to do this. You know, I was actually going to leave because it was four and a half years in. So I was actually just going to leave the company without taking the sabbatical. I was just like, I, I want to do this. So I talked to my manager to just have this honest conversation around it. And I think in his mind, and he, you know, even verbally said like, oh, like tea press and shapes. Okay. Like, oh, you're like, you're serious about it. Cause before he would see it around the office and he was like, oh, like you're serious about this. Like, okay, well, why don't you just, you know, take your sabbatical earlier and your vacation and see if you really actually enjoy doing it before committing to this. <laughs> Great advice. And so. The hybrid. Yeah. But I think the real hook for him was that he thought I was like going to be fatigued on it or you know I, right. I wasn't going to follow through with it and I would come back so I think that was like the the angle there but what a fantastic opportunity that you yeah. had that you could take this time mm -hmm. while still earning a paycheck and, and you know you have a, a substantial safety net under you yeah and that's the thing though like he gave you a safety net, right which yeah. which for someone like me mm -hmm. is the worst thing like I don't want that at all I'd be like cut it all but that's well, a me that's a me thing well, the I, safety I, net was smart. like I had a month and I had a month and change, right, to yeah. like a month and a half maybe to really explore this. But the pressure was, you like, are you going to do this or not? Right. You know, are you right. going to really do this or not? So, but the safety net allows for that pressure, right? The safety net allows for you to say, "Am I going to do this? Yeah, or not?" If you have no safety net, then it's pretty cut and dry. You're going to do this. Yes. And it's I true. think that's that's the the thing that lingers in the mind of, yeah. oh, you know, working at EVA wasn't so bad. Yeah. I mean, I... It sounds like it went the right but, way. But I but. also like got to that point because I was working on things beforehand where 
you feel like you're in a boat, you have one foot in one boat, another foot in another boat, because yeah. both are very demanding. Yeah. Like, you know, your startup or beginnings of a startup and you're, you know, it's like a, it's like a demanding job. So I felt torn. I like knew I had to walk away from one or the other. So anyways, I got this time back to really explore if I liked it. And I caught the bug so hard that month and a half. I just loved every aspect of it. I loved the unknowns. I loved how challenging it was. And after that month and a half, I just knew that this was the path for me. So at that yeah. point, did you even bother going back at all? Or you just emailed like, hey, thank you so much. Uh, peace. Basically. <laughs> selling yeah. my stock. <laughs> yeah, basically, I, yeah, I had to go. So after that, it I was... I love that story because there's so many people... We get the question. I was in my Instagram DMs earlier today. Oh, people yeah. were like, oh, like, when do I leave my job? And this is now a good clip that we can tell people. But it's also the fact that you caught the bug once like once you were doing it. Yeah. And I think most people overlook that. They they think they're going to quit their job and they're just going to live in fear. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like for you, it was fearful at the beginning until you did it and then you were like hooked. Yeah, I was hooked. I mean, I knew before I love working on this. That was there. Mm -hmm. But everyone's waiting for a silver bullet. Like, Doesn't oh, exist. Like yeah. millions in sales or like one day your Shopify just goes like nuts and to change, you know, to change. And like you're hearing <laughs> that ding all the time. Yeah. That never happened. <laughs> you know, I maybe had twenty thousand dollars in sales, not enough to like leave your job. But I it wasn't about that for me. It was just like I have to do this. Like I love it. I mean a fire had been lit. Yeah. And That's it sounds so like good. you know, mm -hmm. it more so than than anything had ever incentivized you or given you drive at eBay, you mm -hmm. now found that. And so yeah. it's, it makes sense why you would immediately pursue it. If that's the fire that lives inside of you, yeah. then yes, go wholeheartedly into it. Yeah. And that was it, you know? So from that point on, it was, I mean, it was a grind in every sense of the word because I, I told you, like, I didn't understand what financing a company entailed or raising capital or angel investment. So those are all terms I actually had to learn while making the tea drops, packaging it, you know, figuring out packaging, uh, shipping orders. Um, and we didn't start on e-com. I like had an e-commerce shop, but I'm not saying we had sales. 